in the words of Jair Alexander, Pack is back. Huh? Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast bringing you the sounds and noises of Jair Alexander six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Summers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Summers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. You can listen to the show anywhere. You get your ears tickled by podcasts and on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Today, we are breaking down quickly uh, because I have to get to the Wisconsin State Fair. Um, priorities, you know. Uh, five positions to watch in the Green Bay Packers preseason premiere. I know it's all very exciting. I'm weirdly excited uh, for this preseason. I didn't think I was going to be as excited for this Green Bay Packers season, given the weight of expectations was back again. I really enjoyed the fun season last year without the weight of expectations coming into it. Um, and now I'm, I'm fully on board because this is just such a fun group. It's still the youngest team in the NFL by quite a margin. And now we got five positions to watch as the Green Bay Packers play the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland at 325 PM central time. Uh, you can find that on a, a whole like weird amalgamation of local television networks. Uh, I believe you can find that list. Uh, at Packers.com, the Packers TV network. It's not just like on one local NBC affiliate or ABC affiliate. It, it, it's there, there's a mismatch of what affiliates it's on, whether it be depending on what local network tries to carry it. Otherwise, you can always listen on the radio to our uh, great friends, Wayne Larravee and Larry McCarran, of course. Uh, but let's let's break down these five positions that you got to watch in this preseason game against the Cleveland Browns, because there are some things that are brewing in training camp where I don't think we really have the drama of the back end of the roster this year, where there are guys who might actually make an impact that maybe we don't know whether or not they're going to make the 53. I, I don't think the 50 battle for the 53 is also exciting this year. Like it kind of was last year, given all the pass catching talent around, right? But uh, unproven talent that there was last year. But this year, there's more battles for who's going to sit where in the rotation. And nowhere is that more true than the Green Bay Packers offensive line. Is Jacob Monk going to take the bull by the horns? Ch take the take the cheese by the head here? Uh, <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, Bernie Bango impression from uh, Big, Ch Big Chase Sports. Show that you should watch live uh, every every. Sunday on IE Sports. Uh, uh, you should go follow him at Big Big Cheese Sports on on the website formerly known as Twitter. Uh, he's all about the the cheese puns. So is Jacob Monk going to take the cheese by the head here and insert himself firmly into the rotation at offensive line? Because I think there's an opportunity on the interior of the offensive line where there are more questions about the caliber of starting level talent uh, of starting level talent and into the two deep than there maybe are at the tackle position. There is a swing tackle question that I want to, I want to address before we wrap up here, but Jordan Morgan, the Green Bay Packers first round pick out of Arizona has Firmly, in my opinion, firmly taken the reins as the number one right guard. I believe that the Packers want him to start right away and see right guard as the position where that is most possible. When I was at training camp last week, I had seen enough through a day and a half, which I believe was the day and a half when uh, Jordan Morgan had first been taking those first team snaps at right guard. I I'd seen enough about one and a half practices through to say, yep, he's going to, he's going to be the starting right guard. They trust him enough. There, there was, you know, a, a good amount of rapport between jo Jordan Morgan and, and Sean Ryan, whose job that it, it appears Jordan Morgan is going to take on that offensive line as the starting right guard. You know, I was, I was sitting right in front of where the offensive line was doing individual position drills and that unit 
still seems to be getting along. There's plenty of competition, but guys still encouraging each other. Sean Ryan working with and giving, you know, little uh, tips and tricks of the trade to Jordan Morgan, you know, about hand placement, quick little footwork things, things like that, that I, I am encouraged by from just a, you know, team building vibes perspective. Uh, but also it, it goes to show that there, there is real competition, but healthy competition to develop technical prowess for these offensive line positions and something that Jordan Morgan is poised to really benefit from right away. But Jordan Morgan is injured. <laughs> so we're not going to see him in this game. And that has given some of these folks who have the opportunity to get into the rotation if somebody were to get injured. And one of those players is Jacob Monk, the Green Bay Packers fifth round draft pick, uh, the draft pick out of Duke, who projects more cleanly as a center. He has been taking largely snaps at center during training camp. But when Jordan Morgan got injured the following day, Sean Ryan was still put into that second team rotation at starting right guard. But very early on, Sean Ryan committed a false start penalty. He then was immediately benched and replaced by Jacob Monk at the starting right guard, and Sean Ryan spent the rest of practice with the second-team offensive line. I find it exciting <laughs> that the Packers are trying different things with their second unit quickly because I don't know if... Other than the position that we will talk about next, I don't know that there's a bigger drop-off from the first to the second unit anywhere else on this team other than offensive line. And so J Jacob Monk steps up to take some starting right guard snaps for a day in training camp. And he had a, fu a funny line in, in player availability later on saying, it's crazy lining up and seeing someone like Kenny Clark right in front of me and seeing the speed that he plays with and the intent that he has coming off the ball. Uh, yeah, <laughs> especially with how Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary are just eating it up in, in training camp right now against a, a little hodgepodge of, a, of an offensive line of a first team offensive line. I can imagine that it is crazy lining up and seeing Kenny Clark across from you, Jacob Monk. Um, but th there is, there's a chance for, for someone to take themselves in, and put themselves into the rotation here, uh, not just on the interior, uh, but also what is going to happen here with swing tackle? Uh, on the website formerly known as Twitter, I believe it was earlier this week, uh, I had mentioned when the Packers released, released their officially unofficial uh, depth chart for this upcoming preseason game that, look, the offensive line is solid, but I think there's a really significant drop-off once you get one injured player, particularly at tackle, because who do they put at swing tackle? Because we have seen in training camp so far zero days of the full first unit offensive line together. And, and we know tons of data shows that there is almost nothing more important when it comes to offensive line play year over year, week over week, snap over snap, than just simple continuity. And we have not gotten the Packers what I believe is their best starting five on the field, or at least what the team thinks their best starting five, five on the field, moving from left to right of Rashid Walker at tackle, Elton Jenkins, Josh Meyer at center. Jordan Morgan at right guard and Zach Tom at right tackle. We have not seen that unit together at all one one time during training camp. Um, what we have seen is lots of players stepping up to take snaps at those tackle spots, particularly the right tackle spots, and, and getting eaten alive by Rashawn Gary. So, does anybody step up in this preseason game and take a a, a big bite at the apple for that swing tackle position? Is it going to be Andre Dillard, who has not looked great so far? Is it going to be Kadeem Telford, who also hasn't looked great so far? But I, I think it's one of those guys, of course. Uh, does either one of them step up in what's close to live game action and show that they have a reason to be the, the first, the first player off the bench? 
Or does neither one of them show enough and the swing tackle actually ends up being Jordan Morgan getting kicked from right guard out to either of the tackle spots. He was a starting left tackle in college, so he has plenty of plenty of experience playing there. Uh, if he's playing on the right side now in the NFL, looks like that's going to be his starting position for, for the time being. I think there's plenty of confidence there kicking him to right tackle if need be. Uh, so does really the first player off the bench end up being one, one of these interior positions? Is it Sean Ryan? Is it Jacob Monk? One of those folks at, at right guard if, if need be. Uh, sliding into that position if you have to kick Jordan Morgan out to tackle for uh, injury reasons. So th there's a lot of moving pieces on the on the offensive line, and this is going to be the first big test that these depth pieces really have to prove they should be in the rotation. Um, the then number one position where there is the biggest, most obvious drop-off from the first to the second unit is quarterback, of course. And who's who's going to be quarterback too? Doesn't matter. Largely, I do not really care about the quarterback competition. Uh, I There was all this hullabaloo coming out during the first couple of days of training camp when uh, Jordan Love was finishing his contract talks, saying that, Oh no, Sean, Sean Clifford had a really rough time. I, I don't totally care because what does it matter that the quarterback two is having a really rough time when he's playing with the ones. Now I say that a little bit in jest that I don't completely care about quarterback two because it does matter to an extent and I'll get on my, I am let's, let's call it not not it's not half baked but it's still it's still fermenting I, I am still fermenting a take on quarterback two and why it matters or or doesn't uh but is quarterback two gonna be Sean Clifford the backup quarterback from last season who in his you know one game of action that we saw we saw Sean Clifford getting <laughs> uh snaps in the fourth quarter of a postseason game against the Dallas Cowboys he didn't look right. Uh, so not great enough that Jordan Love had to get back in the game. Is it going to be Michael Pratt? The very, very late round pick out of Tulane. He was serviceable for the green wave, but not much more than that. Sean Clifford overthrow underthrows. Sorry, <laughs> definitely not overthrows the ball underthrows the ball all the time. He clearly thinks too much of his arm talent. Uh, he doesn't really have, doesn't really have that oomph behind his arm. I, I remember sitting at training camp and watching him underthrow balls. Not great. Not great. He, he clearly doesn't really understand what his arm can and cannot do. Michael Pratt, on the other hand, I, I don't think he has much more of an arm, if, if he does at all. But so my half, my half baked, still fermenting take on, on quarterback two and, and why it does or doesn't matter is look, th there was a, a year in which a Aaron Rodgers started what eight, eight games and Oh my God, I said his name on the show. I don't, I don't remember the last time I said his name on the show. Uh, take a drink. Um, and you know, you end up coming back to try to get that playoff spot clinched in week 17 a and you had backup quarterbacks keeping you afloat. All season long, just to get you to 500 to be able to get you in. And by and large, when you have a franchise quarterback, your backup quarterback is simply not going to be able to do the job and keep you afloat to get into the playoffs. That's kind of a fairy tale. But my half baked take is you want to feel like your team has a backup quarterback good enough to steal you a game, a game. Because ultimately, that's all a backup quarterback can be counted on to do, is to steal you a game. So if your starting quarterback, your franchise quarterback, your $55 million man Jordan Love is going to be out for one or two games, you want to feel that your backup quarterback can steal you one of those. At least give you a chance to steal a game if your starting quarterback is going to be out. So... What I'm looking for in the preseason is a sign that Sean Clifford or Michael Pratt 
can steal this team a game if Jordan Love goes down with an injury. That'll keep him out for one or two weeks. Um, the third position. Also going to talk more offensive skill talent. We're getting to the defense in, in, in points four and five here. Don't worry, folks. Don't buy into the receiver hype. Be wary. Be wary of hype from one preseason game. Because if one of these receivers goes out and makes a big play, everyone's going to be like, yep, he is wide receiver one. That's why Romeo Dobbs. That's why Jaden Reed. That's why Dontavian Wicks is your number one wide receiver on the Green Bay Packers. It's the preseason, folks. It's the preseason, folks. It's the preseason, folks. And last season, the Green Bay Packers did not have a 1,000-yard wide receiver. Last season, the Green Bay Packers did not have a 900-yard wide receiver. Last year, the Green Bay Packers did not have an 800-yard wide receiver. Jaden Reed led the Green Bay Packers pass catchers in yards with 793. After that, nobody had 700 yards. Romeo Dobbs had 674. After that, nobody had 600 yards. Dontavian Wicks had 581. After that, nobody had 500 yards. Christian Watts had 422. After that, nobody had 400 yards. <laughs> Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave um, at 355 and 352, respectively. This was a team that spread the ball around. And, and I think that is ultimately good for, for this team and, and hopefully what this team will do again. Uh, th there is no reason to buy into hype off of one preseason game. If you have reason to buy into hype on any player, uh, do that. Buy into the hype on your player. You know, you know, go to go to the stump for your guy, whoever that whoever that is. Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Romeo Dubs, Christian Watson, maybe one of the tight ends. Go to the mat for them. But but don't let one data point from one preseason game really affect you, your take all that much. You know, you, we talked about. Jane Reed leading this team with just under 800 yards last year. But by ESPN receiver score, Romeo Dubs and Dontavian Wicks were tied for the top ranked pass catcher on this team a year ago, tied at 17th in the league. And Christian Watson came in at 35th in the league by ESPN receiver score. For tight ends, you know, we we didn't really get to see either of them on, on the field at the or both of them on the field at the same time. But Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave. Looked really good when they were on the field and, and you know, <laughs> catching passes and staying on their feet. Tucker Craft came in at 15th among tight ends and Luke Musgrave came in at 17th among tight ends. It's, that's kind of an embarrassment of riches. It, it, if those receivers can, you know, replicate that production, that's a little bit of an embarrassment of riches for, for pass catchers. If the Packers can get that back. Overall, the, the receiver, number one wide receiver debate will play out over the course of the season, week to week. Uh, and it might be injury dependent. Go, go to the mat for your guy. Go to the stump for your guy. But don't let one data point from one preseason game uh, really affect you all that much. Um, if you're going to go to a preseason game this season, if you're going to go to a Milwaukee Brewers game, I think I might be going to the Brewers game tomorrow, um, this, this season. You should buy your tickets for that game on TickPick. Uh, TickPick is, of course, the best place to buy tickets anywhere on the internet because when you do, you're going to pay $0 in fees. $0 in fees. No service fees, no delivery fees ever. Uh, plus, when you use my link in the podcast description, my link that's on the screen now, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order. So, Go to the Google Play Store. Go to the Apple App Store. Download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. -I -I -K. Get the best price for tickets anywhere on the internet. Look, I often go to the TickPick app just before games, games start, just in the afternoon when I'm looking for NFL tickets, when I'm looking for MLB tickets. I'm looking at tickets for this Brewers game tomorrow. Uh, I can get in, ooh, get some very nice seats uh, for the Brewers Dodgers. Yeah, a couple of, you know, uh, they're, they're duking it out for a buy in the NL Central playoffs, and I can get in the door Monday night at American Family Field for eight bucks, Tuesday night for six bucks. It's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal to go watch teams that, you know, might be previewing a, a postseason series, and you can get that that cheap and pay zero dollars in fees on the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K, P-I-C-K. Use my link in the podcast description to save 10 bucks off your first order when you order from TickPick. Um, we're going to get back into the preseason preview for week one for the Green Bay Packers in just a second here. Uh, but next week on the show, we'll break down 
what might be the key takeaways from that preseason game that we're going to see tonight at 325 and also get a little bit into the Wisconsin Badgers football team, what there is to be excited about for this season, what there is to be a little bit wary about for this season as we grow ever, ever, ever so closer to football season. Um, let's talk about the defense for the Green Bay Packers. And what is Jeff Halfley going to cook up here? What young safety is going to benefit the most from this position? This is weird to say based off of what we saw last season. But this defense should have a lot of fun with young, talented defensive backs. I know, I know, I know. We all watched this team last year. There was no such thing as young, talented defensive backs. Uh, but now, now the Packers got them. You got Evan Williams. You got Javon Bullard. You have Eric Stokes back, hopefully. And of course, Jair Alexander, who's a ton of fun in his own right. But the, the number two safety is going to be for, first, number one, Xavier McKinney. Of course, the free agent signing. And, and who? Is it going to be Javon Bullard? Is it going to be Evan Williams? Evan Williams seems to be the leader in the clubhouse by, you know, training camp playing time here. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad sign for Javon Bullard. I think Javon Bullard is just more versatile. The, the rookie out of Georgia. And based on where the Packers are playing him, which I'm curious to see, and we're not going to see a lot of exotic looks in, in this preseason. But. I think Jeff Halfley can do a lot of fun things with these defensive backs and seeing where Javon Bullard lines up the most, I think ultimately is going to give us the biggest tell about who's going to line up with Xavier McKinney, be that Evan Williams, Javon Bullard, or someone else, Anthony Johnson Jr. Because Javon Bullard can play that second safety spot. He could play in the slot. He, he can come up and play nickel packages, dime packages. He he is probably the most versatile defensive back on this team. Uh, something that I know originally when Keyshawn Nixon really broke out, you know, a couple of seasons ago, looked like he had some real versatility to him. And Javon Bullard, I think, is, is more than that. Uh, someone who actually has true versatility there rather than Keyshawn Nixon, who I think showed a lot of that versatility just because of the athleticism. Uh, the speed. Javon Bullard, I think, has more of the know-how, more of that knowledge from the Georgia defense ran by Kirby Smart there. Uh, and now he, he'll be able to you know, flex those, not just physical muscles, but brain muscles. I guess the brain is also physical, uh, but not a muscle. So I think this metaphor works. Uh, <laughs> um, but that's that's the first thing I want to look for on the defense. The second thing that I want to look for on the defense is do the Packers have an issue at linebacker? Does anyone stand out at linebacker? I think this is the weakest starting unit on this team. Of course, we talked about the offensive line and, and quarterback, I'll, I'll, but you know, that's, that has its own caveats, right? Uh, the offensive line as potentially the unit with the biggest drop off from one to two. I think the weakest ones on this team are probably at linebacker. And, and I think that was, look, for all the qualms about the defense last year and qualms at safety last year, I think it still might have been true last year that the linebackers were the weakest number one unit on the field. And Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuffie are surefire starters for, for this team. Ab absolutely. But after that, I think you have a lot of hope for Edger and Cooper. Um who I do worry a little bit is too much akin to a Quay Walker type for, for this team to succeed and for this team to have two of them. That was, that was my criticism on draft night that Quay Walker who suffers in coverage and you kind of went and just drafted another Quay Walker. I don't know. But after that, if Edger and Cooper who, who is injured right now, and we're not going to see in this game, Edge Cooper dropped out of practice uh, the last day I was at training camp. Who Who's left? Who's left to play linebacker? Because not only is there a weakness at, you know, if there is a weakness from the, the ones, that's obviously going to transfer down to the twos, right? If you don't have top flight talent at the ones, well, nobody that's like pretty good talent is pushing them in the twos. So who's left after Edge Cooper, Isaiah McDuffie, Quay Walker? Is that Eric Wilson? 
is it Teron Hopper, the draft pick out of Mizzou that like nobody really liked, <laughs> but I think has, you know, some, some promise there. Christian Welch. What's going to happen here? I am, I am going to watch this, this defense with a real curiosity for does any linebacker stand out? Any linebacker look good in pass coverage? Any linebacker, you know, make a mental error and send themselves to the bench? What scheme does Jeff Halfley deploy? Uh, because also, maybe the scheme that we see out there tells us more than what the actual bodies on the field tell us at the time because of the if you know the the alignment the defense is in right maybe that tells us about okay well this is the alignment for this team now in the fourth quarter here is where the ones and twos fit into this alignment you know it's Carrington Valentine Eric Stokes Anthony Johnson Jr out there right now in these three positions okay but this means that this is where Eric Stokes, J.R. Alexander, Xavier McKinney are going to fit into this alignment in week one. So linebackers are where I'm, I have the most concern uh, and where I want to see somebody make a play. Uh, but beyond that, I, I, I am I am excited to see some of these position battles really, really shake out this week. Uh, and that's going to do it for today's episode of the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Let's go watch the preseason. Preseason football, baby. Um Thank you, as always, for tuning in six days a week to the Scotty Six Pack. You can find us wherever your ears get tickled by podcasts or on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. We will be back again with you, if not Sunday evening on Monday, uh, to break down a little bit of the key takeaways from this preseason game and then get into some Wisconsin Badgers football for the upcoming week. If you have not yet listened to yesterday's show, uh, we broke down the surprise signing for another overseas recruit for the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, We talked a little bit about uh, the basketball team recruiting and why there might be some reason for concern, why there might be some reason for concern uh, about the new overseas recruiting strategy uh, and if there is is something afoot there or not. Um, But we broke that down. Watch some film uh, for Ricardo Greppi yesterday. <laughs> so go watch that if you have not already. Until we talk to you again on Monday, hit the like button on this video. Leave a review, five stars, kind comments on your podcast platform of choice. Hit the subscribe button, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. We will talk to you again very soon. Go back, go.